Hey kids, it's Mr. Flower here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome to another bike review here on the channel. Something a little bit different today. Type of bike that I don't ride very often. Today I'm riding a scooter. This is the uh, brand new for 2022 actually, this model. Yamaha T-Max Tech Max. Cool looking scooter. Well, it's more than a scooter really. It's sort of a maxi scooter, I suppose you'd call it. 560cc, quite a biggie. And it's the sort of scooter that uh, Darth Vader would ride if he had one. Anyway, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So I've purposely come out into the uh, ombrons of High Wycombe, into the urban jungle to ride the scooter because these things are, of course, best suited to riding around town. So this uh, review is pretty much going to be all around town. That is exactly where these things excel of course. Super practical scooters, I love them. I've ridden a few in my time, including the predecessor to this. Back in 2017 I rode the T-Max DX, I think it was called then. It's had some massive upgrades since then. The most notable thing when you jump on the bike is this new TFT that you can see on here. Absolutely beautiful looking thing. The TFT on here actually has uh, three different themes they call them, so you can make it look different. Uh, but it's a really nice thing it's uh, nice and clear nice and bright easy to use it's got this sun shield here which i think is a great idea and i really like the look of that it really brings the bike bang up to date the way it's controlled is via this little joystick here together with a, um, a little home button it's very easy to use this little joystick actually is so much better than so many others that uh, i've seen on motorcycles you can actually feel with your thumb when you've moved it you know tactile wise it's really good in fact, all the buttons are pretty good on here. On the right hand side, the usual stuff, start stop button, you've got a mode button, hazard lights. And the mode button on here, by the way, while we're talking about it, it's got two modes on here, S and T. I'm in T at the moment. I think it stands for traction, or I call it town mode. It's got a sport mode as well. You just tap that button to swap between the two. There you go, I'm in sport now. So very, very easy to change between the two. I have to say, I haven't really noticed that much difference between the two modes yet. Uh, and then on the left hand side, your lights, you've got cruise control, very handy on a bike like this. This big lever here is actually your handbrake. The little joystick we talked about, indicators and horn. So nice and straightforward, looks a bit complicated on the left, but actually they're very easy to use. Now this scooter is a bit unusual in that uh, it's got a lot in common with motorcycles rather than scooters. But before we get more onto that, let me show you around the bike, let me show you some of the little design quirks and features and functions on this bike. All right, so what are those features and functions on this bike then? I love scooters for their practicality and some of the little touches on here are brilliant. But let's start with just looking at the bike generally. What do you make of this? I think it's quite a handsome machine. Uh, I'm not, I, I mean, it looks like the sort of bike, as I mentioned, that Darth Vader might ride, mightn't he? I mean, I don't know if it reminds me of anything particularly from the front. I do like this color, this gray that it's in. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty mean looking machine. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I was talking about some of the practical options on here. Some of the things I love about this is stuff like the cubby holes you get here. Look at this, opens up here. You've got ample room for a phone. This is a iPhone Max 13 Max Pro. So that's the big one, fits in there easy. You've got a USB port in there as well if you want to keep a charge. So that's fantastic. Uh, you've got the massive seat with all the under seat storage as well. If I open this up, I can show you. There's plenty of room in here. I've got my Shubath C5 in there helmet, plus all my uh, vlogger gubbins, uh, it easily fits in there and the seat goes down so you easily get loads of shopping or your helmet or your waterproofs or whatever in there that is lit as well i love that another thing about the bike it's got a center stand on it and when you put the center stand down and walk away with the key uh, you cannot put you can't then move the bike off the center stand so it's kind of a security feature so if you leave the bike on the center stand uh, you can't actually wheel it away so that's great uh, if we just have a little look around the bike the engine cover here i absolutely like this this particular bike has more in common with a motorcycle architecture if you like rather than a proper scoot or rather than a traditional scooter i should say in that if you see here it has got a swing arm uh, and the engine is mounted in the usual place as opposed to being a little motor on the swing arm itself the exhaust on here looks really cool sounds great as well back end big i don't know if these are led lights i suspect they are yes look at the indicators they are led lights on here and it has massive projector headlights at the front as well right welcome back aboard the t-max the lights have finally changed since you were away <laughs> i mentioned at the start of you this is called the uh, t-max tech max well, here in the UK, we only get the Tech Max, and that refers to the fact that basically it's got all the electronic bells and whistles on it. So through this, uh, stop the indicator. Through this um, interface here, you can connect to your phone for things like navigation, music, that sort of thing. 
And navigation wise, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can connect it via Bluetooth and use a free app, or you can subscribe to a Garmin app as well for more full functionality. That's something like seven quid a month or something. I'm not a massive fan of connecting your phone up to uh, hello, your phone up to uh, motorcycles for navigation, but there we go. It's there if you want to use it. It's got that facility. Other technology on board the bike, things like traction control, ABS. It's got heated seat, heated grips. All the comfort things that you want. Talking about comfort, what's the seat like on this? Well, very comfortable. It's big. It's uh, nice and wide, nice and padded, and uh, well, it's up there with the most comfortable seats I've ever sat on on a motorcycle. I'm not exaggerating to say this is just as comfortable as my Goldwing. A really nice place to be helped of course by this scooter riding position i got my feet at the 90 degree position at the moment you've got these big footboards on here you can put your feet forward if you want and ride in more cruiser position or you can put them back and have them a bit more sporty you know it's up to you where you stick them you've got plenty of options to move your legs around and i like that about scooters it does mean they're comfortable places to be if you're going to be on them for a long period of time the roads around this area are absolutely shocking at the moment and I have to say the suspension on this just handles it all with aplomb. Nothing particularly special about the suspension on the bike but uh, yeah the ride is really nice. Not too soft, not too hard, just soaks up the bumps as you'd expect. And then whilst we're talking about comfort the other thing of course to note on here is you've got this massive screen electrically adjustable as well. And that does a great job of keeping the worst of the weather off you. So it's a low position at the moment just because I'm filming and I didn't want it to be completely obscuring your view, but uh, having looked at it, it's probably right in the middle of your view. <laughs> to adjust the screen, you actually go through the interface here. So let me just show you how you do that. If I move this uh, joystick over here, look, I can move it over. I don't know if you can see, go over to the right. It's my themes. Let's come back this way. It's a seat heater, grip heater. There's the screen. And then I can just go fully up like that. And now I'm completely in a bubble of calm, no wind on me at all, but I am looking through the screen. Or you can move it all the way to the bottom. Where I do get a little bit of wind into the top of my helmet, but hopefully it's better from a uh, YouTube viewing point of view. So that's all quite nice and easy to use. Again, the, the grips and so on are there as well. What I don't like so much in terms of the switch gear and ease of use is the indicator. It seems quite stalky. I don't know if they made it stalky so you can find it amongst the other buttons, but it just feels a bit flimsy compared to everything else. Small point, but uh, something I've noticed. Whilst we're talking practicalities, the mirrors on here, very good indeed. They seem a long way away, but you do get a good view behind you. A little bit of vibration in them, I'm noticing, but they do work pretty well, no problem there. Right, so we're just coming into uh, the bike's proper home, the centre of town. So uh, before we get in amongst the traffic, Let's just have a little look through the specs on the bike, shall we? All right, let's talk specs then on this motorcycle, and we'll start, as ever, on the engine. Here it is. Um, this is a 562cc parallel twin. It's Euro 5 compliant, and uh, they've done some clever stuff balancing it so it doesn't feel like a twin. It's not very thumpy when you ride it. It's nice and smooth. Puts out 46.9 brake horsepower at 7,500 RPM and 41.1 uh, foot-pounds of torque. The brakes on here, as you can see, four pot um, calipers on dual discs. They work really, really well. Suspension on the front, 41 mil upside down forks, which are non-adjustable. Uh, the rear, you can apparently manually adjust the preload, but I think you have to do that with a C-spanner. The seat height on here, 800 millimeters, nice and low. I can get my feet pretty much on the floor, not quite flat at five foot eight, but almost, it feels very secure. The weight of the bike, 220 kilograms, uh, very low center of gravity because of the way that engine is mounted in there nice and low. Uh, so great confidence when you stop. Fuel tank capacity of the bike is 15 litres. Gives a range of around 200 miles. Yamaha claim 58.9 miles per gallon on this bike, so pretty frugal motoring. Electronics wise, well, that's one of this bike's fortes, as I mentioned, it's got all sorts of stuff on it. It's got that S&T riding modes. Uh, it's got traction control. It's got connectivity for your phone, for sat nav, music, that sort of thing. It's got uh, electrically adjustable screen. It's got that amazing seven inch TFT on here. Uh, it's got uh, cruise control, heated grips, heated seat, keyless ignition, uh, illuminated switch gear, here, that USB in the front cubby that we looked at earlier, projector headlights uh, and LED lights all round as well. So uh, yeah, pretty well equipped in terms of electronics. Price-wise, 
Otherwise, according to the Yamaha website, one of these costs you £12,700. Some of the options I've made a note of here, colours that this comes in. This one is in the grey, it also comes in a petrol blue. It has an optional top box. Uh, and would you believe, I think there's even optional Olin shock for the rear as well, if you want that. Right, welcome back aboard the uh, T-Max. So much for the specs. What's she like in the urban environment for which she was designed? Well, here we come into uh, the metropolis that is High Wycombe. It's actually looking a bit quiet today, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping it was going to be really busy. So scooters are always good in town, of course. That's what they're built for. This one scores on a number of uh, counts. Number one, it feels very light and agile to turn this bike. So if you are in traffic queues or, you know, having to filter or whatever, it's very easy to move between cars on this. And then the other thing is it's uh, also physically relatively large as scooters go so although it is easy to manoeuvre it doesn't it's not so large that you can't manoeuvre it it does mean you have pretty good road presence so other vehicles can see you coming got these excellent projector lights on the front here which i can see reflecting in this arrows in front of me which makes you very easy to see at five for eight i can get my feet basically flat on the floor look i'm just on the balls of my feet but it's uh confidence inspiring I don't feel like I'm gonna drop the bike at any moment because that weight is so low it makes the machine very confidence inspiring as I say just wondering where to go everybody's waiting for everybody else love it when that happens and down here as well so yeah nipping through the town like this an absolute joy there's no better bike to do it on really Sounds great when you wind her up as well. She's got a nice note to this engine. And it does accelerate well. I mean, easy to pull away from the majority of traffic. This bike will do well over 100 miles an hour. In complete comfort. You can certainly surprise a few cars off the line on this. And a few motorcycles for that matter. Whoops, sorry officer, I judged it too unsafe to stop at that point, <laughs> just as the lights changed. The uh, CVT transmission on here is lovely. Sometimes with scooters it just feels like the clutch is slipping all the time, and I suppose in a way it is. This is the continuous, continually variable drive if you like. I won't attempt to explain how it works, but there are some cones and some centrifugal force involved. What does mean, of course, is you don't have to worry about changing gear. Makes the whole riding proposition very relaxed indeed. What a way to slice through traffic. Handling around the corners is lovely. Yeah, she handles really nicely. Nothing wrong with the ride at all. Brakes on it are great as well. Got twin discs on the front as you saw and they are great at stopping power. And then of course on scooters that left hand uh, lever you see is a rear brake, not the clutch of course. Eminently practical machine of course. That massive amount of storage under the seat, the little cubby holes that you've got to store stuff in. The fact that you can carry your shopping under the seat or put your helmet or waterproofs in there for if you're just taking it to the station to catch a train or indeed if you're riding to work on it every day. Snip round here. Sorry mate, get yourself a bike. Yeah, really nothing about this machine that uh, I can find to not like. It's, uh, you know, normally you can find something, can't you? Maybe I'm not sure if the looks of the overall bike are quite to my taste, although I don't dislike it at all. But as a practical means of transport, very cheap to run. Maybe not quite so cheap to buy, but uh, given the power you've got and the facilities you've got, the practicality you've got, if you have got a mission to ride through town or get to work on one of these, which is a through an urban environment, but I can't really think of a better way of doing it.
So I must say a massive thank you to uh, Yamaha UK for lending me the motorcycle. Thoroughly enjoyed riding it today. Hope you've enjoyed the review too. If it's the first time you've been to my channel, do consider hitting the subscribe button. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer, but I do monthly bike news. Bits and pieces about looking after your bike in the garage. Trips and tours at home and abroad, anything and everything to do with motorcycles. It'd be great to have you along. All right, I'm going to enjoy riding the bike some more. Until next time, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.